Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here, back with another detailed weather forecast. In today's discussion, we'll be looking at the severe weather today, and then we gotta keep an eye on Monday and Tuesday next week. Now, when we do take a look at the Storm Prediction Center for today, there is an enhanced risk of severe weather across southeastern Ohio into West Virginia, southwestern Pennsylvania, including for portions of Kentucky. But it's also Florida under the slight risk of severe weather too. But the enhanced risk of severe weather today is driven by a 10% non-sig of tornadoes across southeastern Ohio and portions there of West Virginia, driven also by... But the enhanced risk for today is driven by mainly a 10% non-sig for tornadoes in the Ohio as well as West Virginia, also given the fact that there's a 30% non-sig for damaging winds today. But there's also an elevated risk for tornadoes today across the Ocala as well as Orlando, Florida area. But to be quite honest with you, the hail threat is not looking really big at all today as there is only a 5% risk for large hail. So with that being said, here's a look at the HRRR model which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh. It's a meso model, a convective allowing model which tells us who's gonna get tornadoes, where are these intense supercells gonna develop, so this is a look at the Ohio Valley and we can see clearly there is a mess of storms that are going to be flaring up across West Virginia as well as the Ohio Valley today. But there has been a lot of uncertainty in exact destabilization concerns over this area. Based on this latest model, this is not really showing a whole lot in southeastern Ohio as we have more stratiform type showers that do develop. But down here to the south where we have more sun breaks, we do have some of these little kidney bean shaped storms that could be capable of producing some tornadoes through the afternoon and evening hours across West Virginia, maybe portions there of southern Pennsylvania. But the amount of destabilization, the amount of instability is going to be quite low under roughly a thousand joules per kilogram. But today's risk is nothing compared to with what you will be dealing with on Monday as this storm prediction center has already highlighted a 30% substantial risk for severe weather and they did highlight in their discussion that there could be a substantial outbreak or episode of severe weather across Oklahoma, northern Texas, and southern Kansas. So when we do take a look at the European model precipitation type forecast, this gives us a general idea Who's going to get some severe thunderstorms and could they be substantially severe enough to warrant a severe weather outbreak on Monday? So here's a look at that forecast and this is for right around say 1 or 2 in the afternoon for Texas and we do clearly have some storms that do develop but it's really going to be in the witching hour by Monday afternoon into the evening hours when that severe risk is going to really get going especially and by about 0Z on Tuesday, this would be roughly about 6 or 7 o'clock um, central time. We do have strong thunderstorm potential over northern Texas, Oklahoma, as well as portions of Kansas, as well as Missouri. Yes, we've got a couple of storms there, but it really is going to develop by about, say, this is roughly about 1 or so in the morning in central time. And look at that line of discrete storms that do develop over central Oklahoma into Kansas as well as portions of Texas. Very expansive, substantial lee side genesis going to be taking place here. 983 millibars over eastern Colorado, which you typically find these surface lows really developing in a hurry. And that's why we're going to have a, a big air mass response at the surface with very strong southerly flow. By Tuesday morning, right around your morning commute over Missouri as well as Illinois, while there's not a whole lot of thunderstorms, keep an eye on these little green areas right in here. This is where we could have some low-topped supercells at first, then they become substantially deeper by Tuesday afternoon. So it's not only a Monday threat, but it's also a Tuesday threat for severe weather with intense long tracked supercells. And that is why the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for severe weather for day six, all the way from southern Wisconsin into Illinois, western Indiana into southeastern Missouri, into western Kentucky, including for northwestern, northeastern, and central Arkansas. So again, not just on Monday, but also on Tuesday, definitely 
keep your guard up because this could be a very substantial outbreak. So now you might be wondering why is the severe weather threat on Monday going to be pretty substantially severe? Well, let's take a look at the 500 millibar height. This is at about 18,000 feet above the surface, okay? So if you're imagining the surface at being 1,000 millibars roughly, you go up to 500 millibars, that is about 18,000 feet. So when looking at the jet stream forecast, we have this very energetic trough that is going to be ejecting over the Mexico Plateau by Monday morning. And look what happens. Once we go forward out in time, this trough is going to really get energetic once it gets into the high plains. And look at this jet streak right here. 100 knots. Okay, 100 knots on the euro. This is very, very substantial. Okay, negatively tilted as you can see here. It is not positively tilted because we can see where our divergent flow aloft is, the left exit region, and that is going to be overspreading the Midwest, and that is why we could have a big, big blockbuster severe weather event on Monday. To add more concerns to this forecast, there's going to be a lot of appreciable moisture that is going to be in place over Oklahoma, southern Kansas, into Texas, where surface dew points to start off the period for Monday morning will be in the low to mid 60s. So definitely some muggy, sticky conditions out there. And then by the afternoon, when this dry line gets really sharp, we can clearly see uh, what the moisture is going to look like. Anywhere between the mid 60s to the lower 70s. On the eastern side of the dry line where dew points will be in the single digits perhaps over western Texas. And it's that future that is going to lead to a lot of thunderstorm juice. This is known as convective allowing potential energy or CAPE for short measured in joules per kilogram. Just how much energy is going to be released into the atmosphere if these storms were ordered to develop. CAPE by itself does not mean thunderstorms. It just means how much energy is out in or within the atmosphere for these storms to use up. So we have a lot of instability that is going to be over central and western Texas. Look at some of these areas. 2,000 joules per kilogram of thunderstorm juice. That's Definitely enough to kick off severe weather, especially for Monday afternoon, where we have a lot of instability down here, right around 2,000 joules per kilogram. So enough uh, thunderstorm juice, enough energy to get supercells to develop and to mature very quickly. And then by, uh, say, um, Tuesday afternoon, we have enough instability over the Missouri area, like St. Louis area, down across central Arkansas, where there could be 1,500 joules per kilogram, including a, a sub-zero or non-zero chance for severe weather across southern portion there of Wisconsin, where you could have instability up to about 500 to 1,000 joules per kilogram. And again, I cannot stress enough, the Storm Prediction Center for Day 5 has issued a 30%. This is a substantial risk this far out in time, and this could include a regional outbreak of organized severe thunderstorms that could be capable of producing a lot of hazards, including strong tornadoes, damaging winds, and very large to potentially giant hailstones, since this will be along the dry line driven. And yeah, hailstones could exceed at least three or four inches in diameter along to go with 65 to 75 mile an hour wind gusts potentially over Oklahoma, northern Texas, and southern Kansas with a day six slight risk again covering portions of the upper Midwest including for Indiana and southern Wisconsin. So please folks, I will keep you all updated on this um, as this gets closer because again, there is a substantial risk of severe weather both for Monday and Tuesday. So now with that being said, I have made some changes to my Atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook. Now will be released on April the 13th at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You do not want to miss that. This Saturday, on the 13th of April, I will have that Atlantic Hurricane Season Outlook released. Also, on May 1st, still expected to have that out 
on Wednesday, the 1st of May. And then, of course, on May 20th, I will have my final outlook and uh, my final tropical um, seasonal outlook on my numbers of what I'm thinking might happen. And then, of course, my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on, on May 1st or May 25th and will run through November the 1st. You do not want to miss that, folks. But in order to do that, you must subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. You could also join Weather Force today for more information on that. Link is in the description below this video. And of course, if you want to check me out on Twitter, please click the link below this video because I do post on Twitter very often. But anyways, if you did enjoy the video today, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. And it, right on cue, my phone decides to go ping. So kind of giving you all a heads up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell icon.